Hello everyone, Lord Aegeon here. Another Company Heroes 2 replay. So on the right side, we have Captain Cataclaw. As British, and so on the left side, we have Helping Hans. Finally, two names that I can easily pronounce. And let the moment pass, and now... The OKW player is going for a Volk instead of a Kubel, while the British player, as you can see it by up here, he's going for two infantry section. In the beginning, it's going to be a bit of a capping war. Since it's a 1v1, it don't cast 1v1s very often. People are going to go out and cap as much as they can. A Kubel, not exactly the best thing in a 1v1. Due to the fact that there's so much open room, you have to go out and hunt out the infantry to suppress them. Though, it can slow down the opponent's infantry. As you can see, he starts some sandbags here. Probably just, and then probably the next time he's ever needs to recapture, he can re... He can build them back up and use them as cover in case he needs to defend it again. Just something little extra that may come in handy. It's, they're free anyway, so might as well do something while they're capping. As you see, it might be our first engagement, but it is our first engagement. Storm Pioneers are chasing after some infantry section. The uh, infantry section gets in some nice heavy cover and the Storm Pioneers retreat out. They took about the same amount of damage. You can see there's a little bit of health missing, a little bit of health missing. I think the infantry section overall took a bit more, but nothing too much. Nothing game-breaking or game-winning damage, I should say, not game-breaking. Volk Grenadiers coming up to uh, capture the fuel, and looks like they're in a bit of engagement. Infantry section try to move forward. They run into the Storm Pioneers in heavy cover. But of course they fall back, they don't want to really fight out. Storm Pioneers probably would win out if they get close, if they didn't get in close in the infantry section probably would have won. Storm Pioneers try and give chase, gets a nice burst in when he's actually in open cover, taking additional damage. I think the increasing amount of damage you take is 10% is almost laser accurate you guys. They sustain actually quite a bit of damage on these uh, infantry, on this infantry section, probably when he retreats back he'll research the medical medical upgrade to get them all healed up and ready for combat. This uh, OKW truck is actually going around and running over the cover. It's a bit of a unusual tactic, but you can use this truck to run over cover. Just less things you have to deal with. Though it is a bit risky, as you can see here, infantry section now shooting it. With the new patch that come out, the manpower uh, cost for re reinforcing an infantry section is... What was it? It's now 28, whatever it was before. Before it was above Grenadier, if I remember correctly. And apparently that's why people didn't... I mentioned in my previous replays, I wonder why people didn't go for the 5-man upgrade early. Apparently it's just this way cost too much to uh, sustain in manpower, actually. The truck is trying to uh, basically p push them out of cover. There it goes, they push them out of cover. They're sort of making them dance around, allowing the Volks Grenadier to to actually shoot the men. One of the men's over here. One of the men. One the one man. Man, my English sucks, even though it's my first language. These uh, Volksgrandir are quite damaged. These Storm Pioneers hopefully can go in and take damage while the Volksgrandir... He needs to retreat both of them. He can't win. Uh, platoon command post is now up. No HQs have been deployed. Apparently, this uh, British player only spent uh, building a infantry section. I'm curious. I never really cast a replay using this HUD. I'm going to try it out. And and even the comment section, whoever reads this video, what is your opinion? Do you rather see this loadout or the in-game loadout? Well, layout, not loadout. Layout. Yeah. Now, the squad that retreated probably did turn the medical squad and healed up. At least there is one. That's medical. Yeah, he's over here. I know for 3v3, 4v4s, this loadout's not very good, well, layout's not very good, but for 2v2s and 1v1s, it's actually pretty good. So, I will just leave it up to the comment section, which uh, type of layout do you want to see? Has 
Medical truck is up. It's not building anything just yet. See, he's building up the sandbags. Now he actually has some cover. He only builds one increment, which is a bit dangerous for a splash-based weapon such as the uh, support gun. But he's, as you can see, he has this nice and heavy cover. Ooh, looks like we're going to see the new commander. It's currently free weekend for him. I've been having a lot of fun with the, uh... Actually, I'm not really exactly a fan of this doctrine. Mainly because I'm not exactly reliant on, on Storm Pioneers. I'm more reliant on my Obosadotsen. So who needs, uh, Storm Pioneers or Flamethrowers when you have Obosadotsen for better range? But that's just my preference. I do, I do like the Flame... Uh, half the flame uh, Hetzler. This the squad needs to retreat. Also, I've been reading up like some ideas. Sending an attack while using recruit for losses. Recruit for losses is uh, manpower re in return if whenever you lose a man. Not exactly full cost for reinforcement value, I think, but still pretty handy. Making making uh, attacking, assuming you don't lose the entire squads. Very cheap. This is what. Oh, I probably just highlight it. It is 80 munitions, so it is a bit expensive, but it works with even other non flame builds. And plus, I love thorough salvage. I love getting resources, especially munitions. I love munition based builds instead of uh, fuel based builds. The flame Hetzler is eh, pretty good. Not as strong as like a KV. Or at least the old KV-8 or anything like that. But it's still pretty handy. And also it's actually the same cost from Oswin. This doctrine, people say the uh, heavy mechanized doctrine, if that's what it's called, replaced the rifle company. I sort of say this doctrine sort of replaced the uh, scavenge doctrine. Sure, you don't get Jaegers, but you get flamethrowers of Pioneers and Jaegers weren't exactly the greatest thing, I'd rather for Obasadots in anyways. Recruit losses instead of uh I forget it was. You get this get rocket bombard rocket barrage, which is though it doesn't have like it's good you have a, when you have small amount of munitions, which is good pretty much while the what was 155 howitzer barrage has increased uh, effectiveness the more munitions you have stored up so overall this is better if you have less munitions howitzer barrage is better versus uh, if you have more munitions both of them have thorough salvage flame hetzler is definitely better than oswin though it is it has not much armor to it so it is a bit more fragile but it has much more firepower I'd rather take much more firepower and babysit it. But I, I say this doctrine sort of replaced the scavenge doctrine. There are smite, small differences which makes them better in one area compared to another. I'm just going to say, for example, this doctrine is very good in urban maps due to the fact that you get the storm pioneers of flamethrowers. In open maps, I say they. The scavenge doctrine would be a bit better with, because the awesome does have more mobility of the Hetzler and plus Jaeger yeah, light infantries are of course better than storm pioneers and wider maps. So I say they do have their areas where they both are effective, but overall this doctrine in my opinion is better. Not surprising, even though this doctrine came out. I haven't really done much of this. I've done some of the doctrine, but I'd rather play Elite Armor for the Storm T Tiger. I love the Storm Tiger. But here we go. We've got some entry section coming forward. One's equipped with, some, with a Bren. There's only one Bren in that squad, not two. Another Bren, perhaps just one, maybe two. Got uh, Storm Pioneers of Flamethrowers. Storm Pioneers should like stutter step in. But then again, when they get close to the Bren, it will increase the damage they take. The f the flamethrower is just out of range out because it doesn't reach from the edge of the building, and they can fire through the edge of the building, so on and so forth. 
some pioneers might. Nope, they're going to go in the building. I was going to say they make another uh, sweep forward. He could drop some medical supplies if the Storm Pine. Nope. He needs 40 munitions. I thought it was 30. Hmm. Commandos coming in. Armored car is still po pecking away. Commandos rushing forward. I say. Nice, uh, mo uh, not Molotov, but incendiary grenade. These pioneers are trying to get in the building. They're very low in health. They're taking massive amount of damage in the open cover, and they get killed. Open cover is lethal. See here, the two Volks grenadiers going forward. They're just shooting at the glider. Because clearly a glider that served its purpose, it needs to be shot at a lot. Oh. The Ganonworth is trying to move forward, but the glider is sort of blocking its path. Really, the OKW player has really lost a lot of his ground. I mean, this area is actually almost touching the. This is at the outside the base. Kubo will probably. He should just retreat. There's no point in taking damage. If he goes any further, he'll get hit by the base flak. Landmines, maybe? Not sure. Looks like we've got a. Uh, Yag pawns are out. Yag pawns are 70. Friend doing a bit of damage. The armor car is doing some damage. It's, the armor car is not very good versus infantry in my opinion. It is good versus light vehicles, but it's reached the point where it's pretty much some service unless it can snag a supply truck or two. These two pioneers are was fighting off the the Royal Engineers. The Royal Engineers, of course, were outgunned. This squad's low in health and a bit low in man, money, manpower. Yeah, this squad should just fall back. He's outgunned. Is he thinking about throwing a cinder grenade? It's a bit interesting why he just sent them through the corner or sent them to that wall. He probably, I think a cinder grenade can catch the house if he chooses to throw it. Yeah, he threw a cinder grenade. The British player has not realized it's the house is burning. Of course, in the flame weapons have severely been reduced in effectiveness. They increase the radius by uh, from three to five, so the radius and area and surface area is about doubled. While the uh, damage has been reduced, instead of taking every point five, and now it takes every point one to five seconds, which that's much much longer in difference. It also makes uh, the pools of fire. And incendiary grenades and Molotovs extremely weak. I mean, that's one of the main pushing power of the conscripts, and now they don't, they don't. Now the main pushing power of uh, Molotovs isn't there anymore. Volk's grenadier capturing up the VP. Infantry section capturing up the uh, munitions. We got the scout car, not scout car, armed car, running forward, trying to hit the kill on the uh, Kubel. But it meets a uh, Yog Panzer. Interesting spot for it. Kubel's getting some nice suppression on this squad. Soon Pioneers will be able to finish off if he doesn't retreat. Oh, 
Yeah, there's also a recent patch made it so it does less damage, does less suppression, but the main thing that really makes it more balanced is minimum arcing. It now has a must do an arc instead of firing sometimes straight, which makes it so it lands much, much later. It makes it much more balanced. Pack houses are still a bit BS in some kind cases since it has a bigger explosion radius, bigger. Uh, it makes make so if it hits more people, it has better suppression rating. And of course, Skype is going crazy. Of oh, my friends are posting a message or something. I shall mute that just for the moment. There we go. That shouldn't be too interrupting now. Infantry section captured with the VP. This VP it remains in neutral no man's land. The mortar teams are hitting. I didn't see exactly where. I think it was right there. Hit. Oh, there's. Oh, it's hitting there. They're trying, just trying to do some damage to the uh, medical HQ. Perhaps even push it away. Perhaps even get some hits on the healing infantry, if there was any healing infantry. Royal engineers coming forward. They're focused on the the Stoom pioneers, but nice suppression hit by the support gun. Another suppression hit from the support gun prevents pins that uh, unit. Richie's back both these units. They're both very low in health. The uh, <sighs> the pathfinding for the win moves forward and moves back. Armored car is still alive and kicking, but really not doing that much right now. It only has three kills, so it's not been very effective. The Volfers overall is just a little bit better for defensive. Armored car is better for offense, but against OKW, and he actually demanded the uh, mortar pit. Might as well destroy it, anyways. He could have captured it and used it, but there's no way he could keep it alive. It'd just be a waste of manpower, or whatever he used to man it. Nice incendiary grenade into the house. May even set it on fire. A nice uh, push by the OKW player, pushing back the infantry section sections. Though they're all very good and vet up. Armor car is still alive. And an in open ground, and plus these guys in cover, and with the Bren, which will des destroy the squad. And they're getting caught up <laughs> on the. Don't mind us, we're just walking here. Seriously. I wonder what the. Uh, what does he see? Come on. Apparently doesn't want me to see what he sees. A nice Hetzler for the flamethrower. AT gun. The Hetzler doesn't have much health or armor, but it is very good at what's job, which is burning the targets. Pioneers Trying to push for it, but they they retreat. Capture the munitions, pause your then retreat the Volk. Not retreating, but just running back. Yag Pons are trying to move forward, perhaps try to get a hit on the thing, on the armored car. Bren was just dropped, he should just immediately re pick it up. Nice incendiary grenade. He did he pick it up? I think he did. I don't see it. I think he did. I can't really see it if there was an outline to the white. I see something right there. Could just be a regular rifle. Yeah, it just was a regular rifle. Or, in fact, it was a Bren, but I think there was only like one man left, and he was kind of Bren. So it dropped in length, in at least in the animation, but not exactly dropped per se. Yag Panzer moving forward, burning up the squad.
Just had to make sure that this wasn't the Vanguard op operations, whatever the uh, Commando Regiment was. Commando's Regiment, the and one v one Air Supremacy, assuming he has munitions at the time, will actually I recently had it. So based on where my HQ was, there was a nerf that m makes the bombs uh, decrease the radius by. A by half, so now they're not as explosive, which makes it good for not an instant wipe of everything in the area. Uh, so the primary HQ can get killed, but not the other HQs. The best way, actually, to prevent, in my opinion, uh, prevent uh, HQ being killed by that is actually turn it sideways. The air operation happens like comes around from this direction. So from here, it's lined up, it'll hit, get hit by multiple more bombs. If you turned it sideways, it won't be hit as many by as many bombs, because that really does make a difference now. Ahead of time where my medical HQ survived two bomb raids, and the second bomb raid, he, it was only around 66% health and still lived. So pioneers come forward. They're trying to get the medium cover before they use their flamethrower. Perhaps now going to move the heavy cover. Flamethrower didn't do much damage to the sun down there in heavy cover. He should just retreat. There, though, one more flame burst could actually might have wiped them all out. But better safe than sorry. Vigor shooting out. He has heavy engineers, if I didn't mention it before. Infantry section guarding this VP. Still trying to hunt down that armor car. That armor car has been alive for a very good amount of time. Though it only has 5 kills, so it hasn't done much. Though it has been a great occupier of the Yagpanzer. Well, apparently there's... Actually, that was that was the Hetzler. Actually, the Hetz he can actually kill the Hetzler with the armored car. I thought if it looks. Ex I thought it was the Yagpanzer at first. Whoops. Main gun destroyed. You may get another shot off. May not. Nope. Heavy engineers once again tr moving in, trying to capture the VP. Infantry group are lost. I don't know which one. A nice hit by the by the infantry support gun. Gotta be careful of that support gun. It did a bit of damage to his own Volk. Volk Grandir now comes with this VP, but the f a flanking Bren gun well, Bren equipped the uh, infantry sections when coming, and using the sandbags that he built against them. Perhaps he should move into like medium cover to just get their combat bonus, or he brings down the other one. Vos Grandir trying to recapture the VP. AT gun now is now out. Perhaps he'll push away the Flame Hetzler, and he, perhaps even the uh, Yag Panzer. Looks like a sh walking Stuka is coming out. He went for Mechanized HQ before uh, Shavia headquarters, Panzer headquarters. Contact armor. Armor car is still trying to go in. Get some hits. Looks like a Churchill is now out. Now the Churchill in the recent uh, patch reduced the armor. I think by two, by 40. I remember from 280 to 240, and reduced the health from 160 to 140. Note the King Tiger. His health is at 100, 1280, while the Churchill's at 1400. I mean, so it still actually does have more health than a than a King Tiger. Of decent firepower and for much cheaper and more spammable, seeing how it 
the OKW players have the reduced fuel and munitions cost. Looks like uh, a lot of the Volkgrandir are quite vetted up. Looks like one of the Volkgrandir did get a friend. Nice little uh, pick me up. Two Volk Grenadiers are going to try and capture this VP. They should be able to do a little problem, seeing that they way outman the uh, infantry section. Though the infantry sec section was able to get two kills before retreats, sustaining three deaths. Churchill not coming forward, perhaps to throw a grenade? Nope, no grenade. Has sustained some damage. Here, this uh, infantry section trying to move forward, try to get another, the other VP. Yeah, Gons are there, Flame Hetzler right there. Trying to cover multiple areas. Focus Grenadier trying to recapture the munitions. F Flame Storm Pioneer is in uh, the building, and Flame Hetzler shows up. This uh, squad's being roasted, he's down to one man. Will he get the last kill? No, he will not. These guys run into their own fire, cause them to yell out, Enemy Flamethrower! Trucho once again moving forward, shooing away the Volk's Grenadier. Volk's Grenadier capturing up even uh, another point in front of the VP in the north. Oh, apparently there's a glider piece right there. Just realized that. I wonder if that's the same fighter from over here, because those pieces go flying. Looks like the infantry sections are trying to move forward once again. Flame pets are going to move forward and start roasting. With all the. with the. playing some. Barbed wire to prevent the use of those sandbags which he filled up. Heavy Engineer trying to defend it out. Though Heavy Engineers, though they do have a Vickers LMG, they're not really that effective. As you can see, he has this uh, squad has sustained a lot of sustained fire on this team. And luckily he there's a little bit of a hole, or multiple holes. Gets a nice kill on that heavy engineer. Note that he is at 400 munitions, so now he can call an air supremacy on HQ and hopefully it will kill it. The centaur tank is now out, which is a good call. He already has a Churchill, so he has his heavy armor. Now he's going to get his heavy anti-infantry out. But now the... Flak weapons do not go through the ground, so now they don't instantly kill a garrison. And plus the damage was reduced, now it makes it a bit more on par, say, with the Oswin. Gets a nice person that Volk and killed that, I think it was a Vet 5 or Vet 4 Volk. Center tank was killed, it had sustained a lot of damage, and then it was picked off by the Shrek team. Churchill coming forward, oh, air operations here. Sustaining a lot of damage. I think he lost... Headquarters was destroyed, I think there was a regular truck that was killed, what I heard. Flame Hetzler should retreat back and get some repairs. The walking Stuka is a bit too close to the Churchill for comfort. And the Yag is trying to come in and hit the Churchill. Only two of the Volk Grenadiers are left. One of them 
is probably a back at base. Yes, it is. The uh, Yag Panzer did st is in stealth mode, or this stealth enabled. Uh, what was it called? Tank Hunter? No, regular move. Oh wait, it is in Tank Hunter. While unclicking, it would just say regular movement. Getting out another Volksgrenadier to replace the ones he has lost. Caption up this area, nice, very nice. You need every resource you can get. Though the folks uh, are just going to ignore them and head straight for the VP. Go straight for the objective. This uh, Vet 3 Burn Squad is severely low on health. I highly recommend they should be upgraded for medics or find a medic because it, it, they won't last very long. Churchill coming forward, Yag pods are fired, but it bounced. Now it actually penetrated. The squad's pretty low on health, though they can there's still four men so they can fight. Flame has us definitely gonna go for it and start scorching them. He needs to retreat the squad, and they all get roasted. They were at that such little health that they just instantly got roasted by the both the Stoom Pioneer and the Flame Hetzler. The yeah, Agpanzer is probably going to move forward and take on the take on the Churchill. Tur Churchill is probably going to take a sh couple shots at the Hetzler. It missed the Hetzler and took a shot and turned from the Yagpanzer. Infantry section trying to recapture that bottom VP, and perhaps he should also recapture the top. Though it is pretty much the end of the game. The uh, British player doesn't really have much left. He lost that uh, centaur way too early. For it be and didn't become any effective. Just like you going for the mortar cover. The Hetzler is coming forward to scorch the AT gun. Wait, that AT gun... Something looks strange, but it looks like it was actually sort of see-through. Unless I'm thinking... Infantry units become hidden, that's why he was uh, invisible or stealthed. And they made a push all the way to the base. I don't think you realize, since the 1v1 map, the bases are relatively close to each other. And flames down this uh, manned uh, squad again. Bren squad, well, folks, grenadiers with the Bren moving forward. Was hit by another AT gun? No, he's shooting the AT gun. That was the sound I heard. And this is the end of the game. He has nothing left. He does have a Churchill. A second Churchill's on his way, but he's severely lax in VPs. And before we can actually recapture two, desynced air. Interesting. Though the game was over, it's just sort of that's an interesting way to end this game. Desync. Oh well, this is a pretty neat replay. Just something to show the often new commander. I enjoy the new commanders. They actually add in some variety, though. The rifle companies, it's probably being obsolete. Same thing, scavenging doc, scaven doctrine, and rifle company. I believe are both becoming obsolete. Though apparently a lot of people do not like the new Pershing. They rather for having two easy eights. But I'm not exactly. U uh, USF player, so I'll leave that up to their dis discretion. This is Laurie John saying thank you for watching and signing off.